In my 20 plus years as a teacher and school leader, I have come to believe that every child is hungry to learn. One of the ways that we foster that hunger is through independence. We encourage every child to follow their passion. For example, in one of our classrooms, we pose the question, what do you care about? Whatever it is, it's valid. And we let them explore. Some recent responses, big cats, lions, tigers, leopards. One student was fascinated with wild felines. Desserts, sweets. One student studied natural sugars, so she could make cookies that were delicious but healthy. Sustainable fashion. A child pondered on how we use what's already existing to create new things. And where did the students turn to begin their work? The students began with writings, conversations, and explorations online. There, they met people from all over the world who inspired them. Wildlife biologists who explained big cats and their social behaviors. Professional bakers who revealed their favorite baking tips. And conscious mentors who fueled inspiration to an already thriving existing brain. The students then played with the information they found. They cooked, they wrote books on big cats, and they designed. And then, they went back out into our world, our classroom, and said, this is who I am. This is who I am. To be able to declare who we are is truly a gift. Discovering who we are becomes the central goal. So why am I talking about this identity goal? When I was a young child growing up in Kenya and Uganda, I did not have the internet, and I assume many of you in this room did not either. Of course, I had dreams of who I wanted to be and where I wanted to go, but the difference is, I did not have an exposure to my three selves. When we're talking about the creation of identity today, there's an unbreakable link to the internet as children develop their whole self. In 2023 and beyond, children will grow up with three selves with the internet. For the past few months, I've been working with several people to prepare for this speech. Three of them are me. They are who I am. So let me introduce you to my various selves. I am here today as my first self, my conscious, the core of my being, what I know internally about who I am and what I want to bring to this world. I am also here as my second self, my social self that the world sees, the self that chose this dress, the self who carefully selected these words, and the self who's walked through this beautiful city of Rome, admiring its culture. And then, I come to you as my third self, my external online presence. If you're watching this on a phone, a device, or some other tablet, then you're seeing me in my third self. Those three selves are how I define myself. In my role as head of school, I've seen the importance of technology accelerate rapidly in March 2020, my community went on spring break during the first COVID lockdown. Two weeks later, when break ended, our families had relocated all over the world. Some had gone back to their home countries, others had left New York City and were living in different states. And yet, school continued. In two weeks, we operationalized a brand new school system online. Those two weeks were like 10 years of professional development for our teachers. 
We had been heading towards a more app-based student learning experience. And instead of a slow crawl filled with resistance, we had no choice but to sprint there. Now, I don't want to characterize online learning as a perfect solution. In fact, when students go online, they may encounter things they're not ready for, violent online, online communities, fake news, or people who seem to have perfect lives. They may encounter people who seem to have perfect lives and do not share the challenges of being human. Many of us in the education profession have had to confront our fears with technology, but we've moved away from asking why we have technology to how we can use technology to support the common good. We must educate children for the exciting future ahead and not where we've been. Today, we must honor the self, the core, the conscious mind and the spirit the self that understands right and wrong, values and morals. It is here that a strong foundation is built that allows the child to understand human connection. Identity develop should development should happen between the first two selves, the first self and the third self, rather than having the third self, the online presence, become the determinant of one's identity. As children grow and technology grows, children will meet many different people from many parts of the world, some online and some in the real world. If children are reflective and secure, then they will be able to more easily move through those three realms of self, understanding that they are non-negotiable. Me, myself, I have worth. I have power, I have value, I'm special, and that's non-negotiable. Permit me for a moment, if I may, I'd like to go back to the boy who loved sustainable fashion. I know this child really well, in fact, I see this child every day, and I live with this child, and he's my son. My son EJ is 12 and has loved fashion for as long as I can remember. He loves studying about the history of clothes, whether reading Vogue, going to museum shows, or even reading fashion blogs. Our son wanted a social media account so that he could share his work with friends and family around the world. Now, anyone who knows the world of technology knows that the places of TikTok, Facebook, Instagram can be scary spaces. My husband and I were reluctant. We were afraid. What were we afraid of? That some belligerent or ignorant internet troll would take away the magic of my son's emerging self. Teaching a child to use social media is very similar to teaching them how to cross the street. We must walk with them through the proper steps, what to look for, when to recognize danger so they can act safely and responsibly. My husband and I sat down with EJ and we said, here you will share your work and you will hear from people. Some people will love your designs and some people will not know what to do with them. Some criticism will be pr pr productive, and some will probably just be mean. But along the way, you need to know who you are. Who you are is special. There's only one like you. As you grow and come into your authentic self that you realize there's only one like you, and you are non-negotiable. So when the time was right, we created an account for him so he could share his work with friends and family. Here we are, four years later, and what have we learned? Our fears were overblown. My son is smart, he's savvy, and he uses that technology when he needs to. 
Today, technology is simultaneously awesome and terrifying. However, it's here to stay and will define the outcomes for future generations. The story of education in the 20th century was one of prizing efficiency, control, and compliance above all else. Our whole focus in teaching was about producing faster, better, stronger beings, as perhaps best evidenced in the ubiquitous multiple choice test. Along the way, we have deprioritized the self. So what opportunities does the 21st century bring for us, this new era where the authentic self is the primary tool for survival. It is a space where the first self, the second self, and the third self live together in harmony knowing that they are non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Thank you, Rome. <laughs>